Friends, this is Reverend David from Christian Path Ministries of Pennsylvania. Welcome to the Christian Path. I hope you're well, and that today's message, the Mark of God verses 666, will open our eyes and really give us some more insight as to what the Mark of the Beast really is. We know that the end times are approaching, and the Mark of the Beast is inevitable. But what exactly is the Mark of the Beast? What does it really mean? Is it just a microchip that will be buried under the skin of the right hand or the forehead? Or is it some kind of barcode tattoo that will be indelibly placed on our right hands and our foreheads? And that's it? It's just a physical thing that says, okay, this is the mark of the beast, or we're going to have 666 written on our foreheads or on our hands? I don't think so. It is a physical thing that's going to happen later on. It's going to be a physical mark. But there's a lot more than a physical mark involved with this. A lot of people don't seem to realize that. If you really analyze, if you really look into the scriptures about the mark of the beast, you see that there's really a lot more involved. It goes a lot deeper than just a microchip or accepting a tattoo or a barcode or something like that. There's a lot more involved than any of us could ever would have could have imagined. Most Christians know that the mark is coming, and they'll say, they'll put on their helmets, they'll take out their shotguns, they'll fight tooth and nail not to get that mark, and then they're saved. Maybe they'll even be killed for refusing to get the mark, because without it, of course, you can't function in society. You can't buy or sell, you can't get a job, you can't get food stamps, you can't get welfare, you can't do anything without that mark. So, of course, they're going to fight And they feel they're saved just because they refuse the mark. The physical thing that says this is the mark of the beast, right? Wrong! Like I said, the mark of the beast goes a lot deeper and there's a lot more involved than we could even imagine. First of all, a lot of people have the mark right now without even realizing it. They may have even gotten it a long time ago from their own churches or from the time they were little kids they might have had it they don't know they even have the mark of the beast the only thing they don't have is the physical microchip or tattoo or whatever the physical literal thing is going to be the obvious mark that's what they don't have but they have the mark of the beast and don't know it confused (laughs) i thought you might be so let's start at the beginning here first of all what is a mark Or what's it mean to be marked? According to Webster, carrying a mark is to be branded, inscribed, imprinted, distinguished by, characterized by, or recognized by a certain thing that's there, a certain mark or symbol. So in this case, the mark that you have will identify who you are, who you belong to, who you serve, and whose side you are on. Basically, the literal sense of the mark of the beast when it happens will be containing every bit of information about each individual. In fact, they'll know who you are, where you were born, where you work, what you eat, what you buy, what you sell, how many times you go to the bathroom a day, because they'll be able to actually track your whereabouts right down to a fraction of an inch as to where you are, what you're doing at any given time. That's pretty scary, isn't it? 
But you have a choice here of two marks. Do we want the mark of the beast? Do we have it already? We're going to find that out later on if we do or we don't. Or do we want the mark of God? The funny thing is, I notice a lot of people look at me strangely if I say that. They say, well, I've heard of the mark of the beast. I've heard of all that, the 666 and all that stuff on the right hand and on the forehead. But the mark of God, what are you talking about? They didn't know such a thing existed. The physical mark of the beast is an eventuality. We know that with the New World Order coming in. But think about this. We're all marked right now. Every single person on this earth has one mark or the other. They either have the mark of God or the mark of the beast. And it's a bit surprising that for salvation, it's not just a matter of rejecting or refusing the mark of the beast when the new world order comes in and they try to push this on you in a physical sense the microchip or the tattoo or whatever the literal mark of the beast is just refusing it people think well then they're going to have salvation just because they refused it well guess again just because they refused the mark of the beast doesn't mean anything there because if they don't have the mark of God they have the mark of the beast by default they'll automatically have it whether they know it or not whether we accept a microchip or a 666 printed on our foreheads or a tattoo or a barcode it doesn't matter we have it by default if we don't have the mark of God now we're going to go into a little more detail about what the mark of God is and what the mark of the beast is and what really is involved with both of them. We know that the mark of the beast is on the right hand or the forehead, right? Now, what is the mark of God? That's what seems to cause the most confusion here. People say, well, I didn't know such a thing existed. What are you talking about, the mark of God? There's a mark of the beast. The problem here is people think that the mark of the beast is referring only and exclusively to a physical, literal thing, like a microchip or a tattoo. But it's not. Now let's have a quick look here at Exodus 13, verse 9, where it says, It shall be a sign to you on your right hand and as a memorial between your eyes that the Lord's law may be in your mouth. Now let's jump down real quick to verse 16, where it says, It shall be as a sign on your hand and as frontlets between your eyes For by strength of hand, the Lord brought us out of Egypt. Now let's have a quick look at Deuteronomy 6, verses 1 through 8. You might want to check these for yourself. I encourage people to look these scriptures up for yourselves. Don't just take my word for it. Now let's have a look here at Deuteronomy 6, 1 through 8, where it says, Now this is the commandment, and these are the statutes and judgments which the Lord your God has commanded to teach you, that you may observe them, in the land which you are crossing over to possess, that you may fear the Lord your God to keep all his statutes and commandments, which I command you, that you and your son and your grandson all the days of your life, and that your days may be prolonged. Therefore, hear, O Israel, and be careful to observe it, that it may be well with you, and that you may multiply greatly as the Lord God of your fathers has promised you, a land flowing with milk and honey. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength and your mind. And these words which I command you today shall be in your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your children, and shall talk of them when you sit in your house, when you walk by the way, when you lie down, and when you rise up. You shall bind them as a sign on your hand, and they shall be as frontlets between your eyes. Now, what does all this mean? Now, the Lord was talking to the children of Israel, we know that, but let's relate this to now and the future. The Lord is saying that it will be a sign to follow his commandments, his statutes, obey him, love him with all your heart, mind, and soul, love each other as he loves us, basically, serving the Lord, putting him first He is first and foremost in your mind at all times, obeying all of his statutes, the Ten Commandments, his holy days, his Sabbaths, everything he wants us to do. That is actually the mark of God. Now, 
have a quick look at Ezekiel 9, verses 4 through 6, where it says, And the Lord said to him, Go through the midst of the city, through the midst of Jerusalem, and put a mark on the foreheads of the men who sigh and cry over all the abominations that are done within it. To the others he said in my hearing, Go after him through the city and kill. Do not let your eyes spare, nor have any pity, utterly slaying old and young men, maidens and little children and women. But do not come near anyone on whom is the mark, and start at my sanctuary. So we see here that this is the mark of God. Not just There's not just a mark of a beast here. There's also a mark of God. And you'll notice in the scriptures here that it's repeated on the frontlets between the eyes, the hand, and in the heart. Sound familiar? The mark of the beast is the same thing, right hand or the forehead. What does that mean? Notice the similarities. The mark of God or the mark of the beast will both be in your heart, on your forehead, or on your right hand. Now, what does this mean? It is similar. Think about this. The frontlet is actually between the eyes. It's the forehead. That's where the frontal lobe is, cerebral cortex, where reasoning and emotions are triggered. Meaning that the mark there, whichever mark you have, deals with the mind, thought, priorities. So whatever mark we have there on our forehead says where our minds are, where our thoughts are, our priorities, our reasoning, and our behavior. It's either going to be for the Lord or for the beast. Now on the right hand, that's the works of our hands. So this symbolizes the works we're doing. Are we following the ways of the world? Or are our hands working for the Lord? On the heart, that's directly associated with love, loyalty, trust, faith. Wherever love and emotion and loyalty come from, that is where the mark is supposed to be. And whose mark are you going to have? So basically... We all have one or the other right now. We all have one mark or the other mark. We have for years, maybe from the time we're really young. We just never knew it. We either have the mark of the beast, meaning that we follow the ways of the world, the lust, the greed, jealousy, hatred, selfishness, love of, the, of oneself, love of money, or we have the mark of the Lord, which is following all the Lord's commandments, statues, laws, holy days, Sabbaths, and especially love for the Lord and for each other. Now, let's be realistic here. It would be a way too easy to just say that, well, we're going to refuse the physical, literal mark of the beast when the time comes. And whether it's a, an embedded chip or it's a tattoo, that means the mark of the beast 666 and worshiping the beast headed for condemnation now do you think that people don't know what that would mean do you think that they would willingly say okay well look i've heard of all this i've read all the things in revelation i understand the mark of the beast i understand 666 i don't have a problem worshiping the beast i'll worship the devil and go to hell and burn forever sure that's not going to happen do you think people would willingly want to do that and of course, we know that Satan himself is behind all of it, and he is a lot trickier than that. You think he doesn't realize people know what it is and that they wouldn't go for it? He's the master of deception and lies. People already have the mark of the beast by following the ways of the world, and we know that the world is being run and governed by Satan right now. Thinking that just because they go to church every week, or they consider themselves a good person... They think they're saved, and that when the time comes when they say, well, we're going to implant a chip in your arm, or we're going to put a, a tattoo on your forehead, and they say, oh, no, you're not, they think they're saved. All they have to do is refuse the physical, literal mark, and they're saved, right? I don't think so. Again, deception is a very large part of it. Do you think that most people even realize that they have one mark or the other? Because we all do. It depends on where our minds are, the work of our hands, and where our hearts are, and what we're doing, how we're living our lives. That is what's governing what mark we have right now, without any physical, literal thing to signify to everyone else what mark we have. 
People already have the mark of the beast and don't know it. That's what's scary. They have no idea. Getting the physical mark when the time comes, that's just a public acknowledgement that they're willing to cooperate with the system, do whatever the system says. They knew they, they know that they have to have that just to function in society because rules and laws are going to be passed where you observe the Sabbath on Sundays, you work on Saturdays, which is the actual Sabbath, the seventh day. You can't buy food, you can't do anything, you cannot function in society without this mark. So they're going to have that. They're going to get that. But do you think that they're going to really believe that they're going to be doing an evil thing and going to worship the devil and, and take on the idolatry and worshiping the beast? Of course not. They're going to think that this physical, literal mark is a good thing. They'll believe that it's fine to accept the mark. Otherwise, again, they won't be able to function in society, but they're not even going to realize that they've had that mark for a long time. This is just a physical, literal thing that cements it to tell everyone else that they're going along with the rest of the world. They're being of the world. It officially confirms in a physical sense by accepting this literal mark that they are willing to go along with society, whatever society says, the mass population, the entire world says do this, they're willing to go along with it. They're uh, functioning in society. They don't realize that they have the mark of the beast and they don't have the mark of God. Now the mark of God has no physical or literal confirmation. But the Lord sees it, the angels see it, they know it's there, and by our thoughts, our actions, our lifestyle, they know we have the mark, and so do we. We know we have the mark of God. Now, when the time comes, the end days, and we know they're coming very soon, we know what the fate is going to be of the people who have the mark of the beast, eternal condemnation. We also know what the fate of those with the mark of God are going to be. Take a look at Psalms 37, 37 through 40, where it says, Mark the blameless man and observe the upright, for the future of that man is peace. But the transgressors shall be destroyed together. The future of the wicked shall be cut off. But the salvation of the righteous is from the Lord. He is their strength in the time of trouble, and the Lord shall help them and deliver them. He shall deliver them from the wicked and save them because they trust in him. And we also know that in the end days, when the new world order sets up and the mark of the beast comes into place, everyone has to get the physical literal thing, the chip or whatever it is they're doing. At this point, it's going to be clearly defined who has which mark. If you have the mark of the beast, the physical mark, it just says, okay, I agree with what's going on in the world. I need to function in society. You're also agreeing to the corruption of the world, including breaking God's laws, worshiping the beast, doing everything you're told to do. Or you have God's mark, the mark of God, which will label us as rebels, enemies, and it will put a great big target right in the middle of our backs. Let me tell you. A lot of us will be imprisoned, killed, for having the mark of God. But we have to think about it this way. Look at the big picture. Eternity. One mark means eternal condemnation, and the other means eternal salvation. Which do you want to have? Remember, we all have one mark or the other right now. And again, we will be obvious because we're not going along with what everyone else is doing. When you have the mass majority, you have the mass population that have had the mark of the beast because their minds, their hearts, their works, all are of the world, all governed by Satan. They had the mark of the beast for years. They didn't even know it. What do you think is it's going to be to them to get this chip or this tattoo of a barcode, whatever that physical mark is, they feel they're doing the right thing. They're going to feel that the people with the mark of God are the problem. They're the troublemakers. They're the evil ones. Do you see how things flip around like that? And we're all going to have one mark or the other. 
But you know what? Don't let yourself be deceived. Don't take anyone's word for it that you're fine, that you're okay, that you can just go along go with the rest of the world, be of the world, think like the world, and just think you're going to refuse a physical mark when that time comes. Study the scriptures for yourself. Keep your prayer lines open to the Lord. Follow his commandments. Make this a part of your personality, that you are on the Christian path, you're following the Lord. You are doing his works. He, the Lord is constantly on your mind. The Lord is constantly in your heart. And you're doing the works of the Lord with your hands. It has to become a part of you. You have to know that you have the mark of God, not the mark of the beast. And when the literal, physical mark comes along to just tell everyone else that you're of the world, you're in society, you need to function... That is when things are going to separate. We are going to be separated from them. We are going to be enemies. We're going to be thrown into prison. A lot of us will be killed. We will be enemies. We will be rebels. They will want us out of the way. They'll actually think we're the evil ones. Oh, is that ironic? Is that crazy? But it's all been prophesied. You have to remember that. You have to take your own time to study the scriptures. Keep your prayer lines open to the Lord. Follow his commandments. Make it a part of your personality to be of the Lord. Do his works. Make it a part of you. 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. You want to have the mark of God on your heart, on your hand, and on your forehead. Not the mark of the beast. Because we know what the future is for both people. We know what happens to those who have the mark of the beast. And we know what happens to the ones that have the mark of God. Now, don't you think it would be a lot easier just to say, okay, the mark of the beast is the physical thing, and I'm just going to live my life the way I live my life. I'm going to do what I want. Sure, I go to church every week. That's fine. And I'm just going to refuse the mark of the beast when it comes up. That would be too simple. Do you think it's easy to have the mark of God, not just knowing what the future holds. If we're still breathing and on this earth and haven't died of an illness or of old age or something before all of this comes about, don't you think it would be easier just to do it that way? Do you think it's easy to have the mark of God even before the end days happen? To follow in his statutes, follow his commandments, keep him on your mind, in your heart, doing his works with your hands 24-7. Is that easy? No. We know as Christians it's not. But the thing is, we don't want to be a Laodicean type of church. We don't want to be Christians that are Laodicean lukewarm. The Lord does not want lukewarm. He either wants fiery, burning passion for him to serve him, to be one of his people, to have his mark on you, or go the other way and be cold. He does not want someone in between doing anything half-heartedly. You serve him or you don't. And it's not an easy thing to do. And as time goes on, we know that it's not going to get any easier. So what do we do? First, we have to start by repenting of our sins, being baptized, and I don't mean being baptized into any specific religion or denomination, just being baptized in the name of Lord Jesus. Like Peter says in Acts 2, 38 and 39, repent and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remissions of sins and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is to you and your children and to all who are afar off as many as the Lord God will call. So once you repent, you're baptized, accept the Lord Jesus as your Savior, you're on the Christian path, you're going to follow in the Lord's footsteps, we know that the Lord will send us the Holy Spirit, which is his power, to dwell within us. That's God's power. And if you think it's going to be easy from that point, guess again, just the opposite. Didn't the Lord Jesus say, pick up your cross and follow me? He didn't say it would be easy, but as Christians, we know we're going to be persecuted, laughed at, ignored, maybe even attacked. 
And as time goes on, when we get closer to the end times, we know it's going to get that much worse. Persecution is going to turn into imprisonment, violence, maybe even death for us. But again, remember, we have one mark or the other. We're either going along with the world, doing all the worldly things, all the cares of the world, lust, greed, chasing money, all the wonderful things, the houses, the cars, the way the world thinks. That is actually the mark of the beast. Because the earth is being run by Satan right now until the Lord returns. And these are things of the world. This is what everyone else is doing. The mark of the beast is following all of these worldly things. Being worldly. Pursuing these worldly things. That's where the mind is. That's where the work is being done. That's where a person's heart is. So they already have the mark of the beast. The only thing missing is in a matter of time, a physical thing to confirm it and tell everyone else that they're going along with them. If we're on the Christian path following the Lord's footsteps like we should, observing all of his laws, his holy days, his Sabbaths, his statutes, his commandments, everything we're supposed to be doing, we know that we will have the mark of God. Once we're on the Christian path, we know it's not going to be easy. But you know what? The Lord doesn't put us on that path and say, Okay, good luck to you. <laughs> he wouldn't do that. He knows how hard it is. He did not leave us on that path alone. We have the Lord. We have the Bible. We have each other. And of course, if you need me for anything, don't hesitate to contact me. All my contact information is right on my website. It's www mychristianpath.net that's mychristianpath.net and if you need me feel free to contact me but remember we're not alone in this I can't emphasize enough how important it is to make sure that we have the mark of God not the mark of the beast so again it's not just going along your merry way and just waiting for a physical chip or a tattoo or something to try to be forced on you so that you can reject it and you think you're saved. It's a lot deeper than that. There's a lot more involved. Right now, we have one mark or the other. We don't want to have the mark of the beast. We want to have the mark of God. So keep your faith strong. That's very important. At all times, keep your faith and your trust in the Lord. When pray constantly. Keep your prayer lines open. Keep your Bible glued to your side. Read your scriptures every day because that is our defense. We have the Lord. We have each other. We have the scriptures. We have the Holy Spirit. And again, if you need me, don't hesitate to contact me. Thank you for joining me for The Christian Path. Until next time, goodbye, friends.